It's 10 o'clock a Mountain Time. It's Tuesday, February 2nd, 2021. And welcome, Tom and Shane. No Business and Politics is on the air once again with another podcast. Welcome, Shane Matalman, half man, half amazing. My co host in uh, beautiful Vancouver, British Columbia. How you doing, man? Oh, pretty good. I, I would like to be a Robin Hood shareholder right now or a trader. You know, <laughs> as of last night, they've raised $3.6 billion because of a yeah. great win. That the should, little guy uh, is fun. This this is a business that that I want to mention because we're talking about business and he's got uh, sixteen million hmm. now m- members to his firm and or try I mean clients to his firm traders, and it's been an eighteen year tra- travel for him. But he's you know he's stuck to it, and today is going to be a good day because we're going to talk about uh, marketing and uh, and part of your marketing plan. So it's a, yeah. it's a good addition to our series. That's right. All right. Hey, don't forget, uh, we're here every Tuesday and Thursday at this time, 10 a.m. Mountain Time, and we'll take, uh, we'll do a business topic uh, each uh, Tuesday and Thursday to help your small business, your startup, uh, whatever you have going on, uh, get along. And if you missed any of our past shows, you can watch all of them or listen to them, uh, whatever you want to do, the both are there. Uh, you can listen to past podcasts at kmmsam.com. Just click on Tom and Chain's podcast, and uh, please uh, make sure to share that with your friends. Also, our political show is on radio Saturday, 8 to 11 uh, Mountain Time. Uh, click listen now. You don't have to sign up for anything. You don't have to leave any personal information. All you have to do is click down and join the show, and it's pretty cool. Also, our new website's up, TomAndShane.com, so uh, go over and check that out. There's some business uh, things over there that uh, might interest you, and we're starting to put some uh, articles and tips and videos up over there, so uh, by all means, uh, visit TomAndShane.com if we're not on for business help and uh, things like that. And the other things we need to uh, need to remind you of a couple of things. Uh, One is, if you're watching us on YouTube, uh, hey why not um why not uh, subscribe and uh, like us <laughs> yeah why not do that subscribe <laughs> like us ring the notification bell when uh, you subscribe you'll never miss another podcast i'll let you know when we're going to be on also we're on patreon uh, if you'd like to support the show there is some costs involved in putting this uh this these shows up with uh, cameras microphones mixers uh and uh, the various software and everything that we have to buy a lot of it's not inexpensive so if you'd like to support us we'd appreciate that and we'll put the uh, patreon um, in the uh, website below the description below Uh, three bucks a month you can be a supporter of the show if you go to five bucks a month uh, you'll get some special tips and stuff from shane and myself and uh, you'll be a kind of an insider uh, with that kind of uh, deal. So, all right, Shane, uh, today we're going to talk about six types of small business advertising and how to use them. Uh, so we should crank right, uh, crank right into it, I guess, huh? That's right. <laughs> Let's go. Right? Let's wind this baby up. All right. Well, the first thing we want to talk about is your company image. Um, uh, should you advertise your company or yourself. Uh, if you're in a small town um, where everybody knows you, it might be an advantage to uh, do yourself rather than your company. If you're in a larger area, like I was in San Diego, I worked for a company called uh, Video Library, and uh, we wanted people to learn the name. So we just put a one inch ad, Video Library, X number of stores. And uh, we wanted people to see that. And when they were driving down the street and saw the video library sign, they say, ah, I know that sign. I don't know from where, but I know it. And the other thing is, um, will people deal with you regardless of what company you're with? For example, I work for two different printing services here in Bozeman. Uh, when I left one printing service and went to the other, I took my customers with me. Uh, because uh, they didn't care who printed it or where. Uh, what they cared about was dealing with me, that I was dependable, I was there, I would take care of their problems if they had any, and uh, that's where that's where we went. 
uh, Shane, you as a uh, broker and a stock person, um, uh, your clients probably didn't really care what company you were with. They dealt with you, right? That's correct. Yeah. And the two fields of endeavor I followed in my life was uh, food and stock. And uh, it was quite fascinating. You know, it, it's interesting because as we pointed out, uh, you're dealing with either a product or a service to a client. And you're dealing with shirts, trades, and uh, services. And it's, you know, that makes up the people that you're trying to reach. Uh, one of the fascinating things I learned about the restaurant business early, advertising did not work. It does for large big box or large fast food restaurants. But if you own a small operation, word of mouth, baby, best advertising in the world. And word of mouth will carry you for 30 years to sell your restaurant and retire. So, you know, it, it, it's a bounce back and forth, like Tom said. Small businesses in small towns, generally, word of mouth isn't always predicated on the product. It's predicated on the service and how well you were treated mm -hmm. and how nice the people were that helped you look at the uh, products that were available in that store. So training and people always become the most important part of uh, creating an image for your company. Absolutely right. Yeah, that's um, it's, it's a critical uh, it's a critical thing. Um, the other thing I think uh, you being in the restaurant business, one of the things that is uh, can be important to either a small restaurant or a large restaurant. Uh, if you have a competent cook or someone who runs the kitchen, uh, that that will bring the business in. And sometimes that chef may go from one restaurant to another and the people will follow because they like the way uh, that person prepares the food. That's right. And you know, there's a back in the front to a restaurant. I always enjoyed running the back. So I did cooking and I can proudly say, you know, I'm in uh, better homes and gardens back in the eighties. I had three of my recipes published. So of course, I grandized them by getting a copy of them from the magazine and framing them and hanging up in the entrance. Entrance, You know, a lot of restaurants, of course, put their menu up out front. And mm -hmm. uh, we did, of course, outside. You know, we had a sandwich sign and everything. And yeah. then, of course, we had special nights of the week. Friday night was, uh, 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 you know, oyster night, you know, cowboy mm -hmm. oysters. And, uh, yeah, that so that, that brought in a, a huge crowd because – it was a fascination for people and they got to use it. So fresh oysters we had flown in and from the East coast and then we had Western oysters. So yeah, yeah, yeah. these are the kinds of things that you want to do uh, to draw people. Uh, you know, people in small stores can have sidewalk sales. Uh, mm -hmm. They can have a, a flash sale and they can use their windows incredibly well. Because a lot of small towns, people drive by uh, your, your shop, you know, and, People are always curious for something they like, you know, so they'll always drive by your shop and they might look to see if there's anyone in there or look for a car or somebody they know. And then they could see, you know, this big, huge sign in, in your window. So it's quite fascinating how the smallest things can build your brand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's for sure. Well, that's where we want to move to next. Uh, how to advertise your name or your brand, I should say. And, um, this is very important. Procter and Gamble is probably the leader in this. Uh, they're very good about brand names, uh, Tide, uh, Cascade, uh, Ivory Soap, uh, you know, all of these things. Uh, they didn't do Tide for dishes. Uh, you know, <laughs> they made a Cascade. So uh, they developed these brand names that are synonymous with these products. And uh, that's... Uh, that's where it, that's where the money is. And, um, uh, you know, if you have a brand, uh, then, um, uh, you know, like, um, uh, miracle whip or Velveeta or tide or something like that, uh, then, um, maybe uh, building that brand, uh, synonymous with what you do makes sense. That's true. And, you know, historically, and, and particularly as children, um, in the fifties and sixties, we, we were conditioned to this. Uh, the result was, is uh, as you said, Procter & Gamble's probably biggest product was, was Tide. But the two most recognized people in the world was, number one, the Marlboro Man. 
and mm-hmm. Colonel Sanders. And it was yeah. quite fascinating on, on a basis of not just television advertising, um, but uh, poster advertising. Posters work well. Um, a lot of people in the real estate industry use them on uh, benches, you know, at bus stops. Um, mm-hmm. It's a convenient way of reaching uh, a group of people that probably don't own a home yet and gives you the opportunity to advertise to them while they're waiting for the bus. And uh, so, again, it's it's always uh, mm-hmm. positioning. It's the uh, cost, which we talked about uh, when, uh, in your business plan, your marketing plan. You always look at a three to five percent uh, cost for uh, for business as as a cost on your financial plan and and business plan. But boy, I'll tell you, the pharmaceutical companies have this wired, folks. They thirty five to thirty seven percent they spend of their uh, annual mm-hmm. um, revenue they generate in in advertising for two reasons: one, to get to every doctor in the world, and to you. And two, so they can write it off because they make such a massive amount of money. Yeah. Well, and they this, got a massive and amount you of can write off. This is an expense you can write off. So it's another benefit. Enhancing your brand and the cost in doing that, you can and you can write all that expense off. Whether it's business cards to flyers to advertising, radio, television, mm-hmm. all an expense for your business. Great deal. Yeah, it is. Uh yeah, it's pretty uh pretty amazing all the things you can uh that you can do here that you can, um, though, that is the cost of doing business. And, um, sometimes people are confused, I guess, between marketing and advertising, which is which I always said that, um, my business card is advertising decided who I give it to is marketing. So <laughs> that, may be the, that may be the answer uh, there. So Well, people always but, talk about demographics in the business. So depending mm-hmm. on what you do provide to the public um, as something for them to purchase, which is, again, a product or a service, it, the demographics mm-hmm. of it are very important. And so, uh, for example, if you're going to use television, a, a specific time of day it would be more important to you. Um, then, uh, you know, for like, if it's something for women during the day, cause they watch or listen to television, um, uh, if they're at home and most people now are at home, of course, we're all hibernating, you know, Yeah. <laughs> but in the evening, of course, oh, yeah. and, and, and older people at home, of course. And then of course, in the evening, it's a different demographic in, in uh, television radio is big because, uh, um, the, the cost is far less, but you can effectively reach far Far greater people people in a smaller area, which is where you're located. Mm-hmm. TV is mostly yep. for national advertising, and like we were saying, uh, you know, this Super Bowl this year, no Pepsi, no beer commercials. It's quite fascinating. Yeah. Uh, a lot of the majors have stepped away from the, the sport. Yeah, but uh, mm-hmm. it's an important aspect of our life because uh, we are consumers, and they want to keep us motivated, baby. That's for sure. All right, moving right along, uh, how to advertise a service uh, instead of, or rather, uh, than a product. And this is uh, this is where you can't touch and feel and hold the whatever you purchase, Shane. Uh, uh, carpet cleaners, uh, house painters, uh, you know, things like that. Uh, consultants, um, you know, they uh, case. Um, you would uh, you would advise people on stock purchases and things like that. You might you might hand them a stock certificate, maybe, <laughs> but probably not. No, uh, very, few people, on- uh, very few people register their stock. Um, yeah. If you have a dividend uh, stock you own, you should register. Oh, it's a requirement because otherwise, um, the once a once a year they'll send you their stock. If you if you want it quarterly, they'll, they'll send it to you. But having said that. Um, there's an, there's a aspect of sales called cold calling where you literally, we would go through a phone book, don't mm-hmm. exist anymore, but back then they did. Yeah. And you'd, you'd literally just go down the line, you know, go down, uh, you know, an A column, B column, you know, A, B, right through the phone book and call every single person. Yeah. So in a sense that, that became, as you say, a marketing tool. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you, you know, uh, I gave good phone and I could talk to people and felt comfortable talking to people. And uh, that that was a great benefit. So, my uh, um, my parental uh, uh, education 
probably helped me in that matter and my personality because I'm an extrovert. Not that you could tell. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, we're going to talk about uh, how to sell on the phone in a future uh, broadcast. So stay tuned uh, for yes, that because uh, we're going to do how to sell on the phone as well. So, but yeah, the big thing we have to recall here, or we need to take away from this, I guess, is that in most cases you're advertising for this type of, um, of entity is going to be emotional because they can't hold the product in their hands. They're going to hold it in their mind. Uh, so as I mentioned, carpet cleaner, um, you don't, you don't, you're not selling clean carpets. You're selling health of the home, <laughs> things like that. You know, the kid rolling around on the carpet, uh, it needs to be clean, you know, and healthy. Yeah, and, and in that case, you know, cleaning your carpet is something you need to do. Yeah. It's not sure. something you want to do. That's the great yeah. thing about some products. They, you need them, <laughs> but you don't want to do them. <laughs> I know. Yeah, like I, fertilizing I, the yard, yeah. you know, there's a whole no. bunch of things that, that you just you know, have, to, that have to do, right? There are definitely jobs you don't want to do. Uh, right. I, I have my own carpet cleaner that works quite well, but man, do I hate to get that heavy thing out and do the water and the soap and yeah. You know, go back and forth over some, some spot where the dog didn't make it outside in time or something like that. You know? Yeah, or a red it's, glass of wine. That that's yeah, a, wine, a whatever. Yep, yeah, it's it's uh, yeah, it's it's not good. But yeah, there there are some jobs that uh, that's why a lot of people. I'm going to call the carpet cleaner, even though I could buy a carpet machine for you know next to nothing, almost you know, hundred bucks or. Uh, you know, less than two hundred dollars, probably. That, That's right. Uh, hey, I'll, I'll pay a couple hundred bucks twice a year to have some, uh, you know, some group come in here with their, uh, you know, high-powered stuff and uh, do the carpet. So, yeah, it's uh, it's worth it. But, but uh, again, the thing we want to emphasize is that you're advertising on this. You're selling something uh, for how the customer feels after you're done. You know, if uh, they see their freshly painted house looks good, you know, or carpets look good, um, you know, whatever it is, if it's a cleaning service or who knows what, a landscape, you know, any of those uh, businesses, um, you know, they can see the finished product, but um, getting getting uh, your uh, business in front of that prospect or that um, client is... Um, is probably going to be emotional in, in this case. So, and that's true because as, as we've discussed in previous, previous shows, uh, women are, are the vanguard of, of consumption. Uh, they represent about 65% of the purchases in, in our economy, 35% towards men. Uh, men don't buy emotionally. They, you know, they just, I need to get this. I'm going to go get it. They go get it. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, a woman can be in the middle of doing dishes or even vacuuming and the television could catch her and bam, she's off to get those new pair of shoes. Right. Yep. <laughs> That'll be it. So, well, another, <clears throat> excuse me. Another one we got to talk about. Uh, you may ne never need to deal with the, pu with the public. Uh, you may be a business to business advertiser. For example, Shane, uh, you in the restaurant business, there would be people who would call on you. Uh, or uh, there might be kitchen equipment they were selling. It might be, um, uh, you know, uh, food items, uh, silverware, dishes, whatever. Uh, and they would never deal with the public in general, but you might uh, be uh, looking through restaurant trade magazines and say, oh, here's a good idea for, uh, you know, a French fry thing or, um, you know, how to make soup faster or more of it or something like that. That's right. Um, my nephew uh, works uh, for a company. Um, he's a, what's called a high up driver. So he goes around and repairs the big metal garbage cans that they uh, they they you know they rent. Um, mm. One of their largest customers, of course, are restaurants. And it's incredible how generous people in that business can be. You know, especially restaurants because a lot of their garbage is wet. It's you know it's bio mostly. And uh, so, you know, when they see somebody, uh, it's, it works two ways. Not only are they being nice to come out and be thankful, but they, well, you know, they'll give them a pizza. They'll give them a sandwich. They'll give them 
a bag of sausage or what or, or you know whatever mm -hmm. they provide or produce and that in itself is marketing and it's a quiet marketing because uh, it might be you know the end of the day and and you're a bakery and uh, you know you only like to serve fresh hot buns or, or bread so you're, mm -hmm. you're in effect being kind but at the same time it's you know that's business to business advertising and Word and out, word of mouth. I'm telling you, it has a huge impact. We grew up in the 70s and 80s and 90s with everything being determined at the water cooler. As strange as that sounds, there you go. Business to business, people that you worked with, you know, you'd meet at the water cooler, and pff, this is a movie you got to go see. You know, this is a kitchen you you know a, appliance you got to get. Or boy, oranges are really expensive here. So, uh, yes, uh, communicating amongst people, um, business to business, meaning, as Tom and I were saying, um, uh, someone called Hobart was famous for their dishwashers. Oh, my goodness. Can't tell you how many Hobart people um, I fed after they came and uh, repaired our machine. Because, of course, without the right temperature, you can't, you know, serve. And God forbid somebody yeah. from the city comes in to check it. You're in trouble. <laughs> that would be true. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, it's critical here, but um, yeah, uh, trade magazines, things like that. Uh, certainly, uh, you know, you're probably going to if if you're in business at all, you're going to be getting some of those. And uh, uh, yeah, as Shane was talking about it's um, it, it's a lot different than it used to be with um, you know, with uh, the internet now. You can look up restaurant supplies. You can look up um, you know, landscaping tools. You can look up. Uh, uh, laundromat uh, stuff, you know, or whatever, whatever it is and, you and, need to deal directly with that person. That's right. In the, in in this age of uh, you know social media, um, a whole industry of marketing has disappeared, and that's uh, magazines. Mm -hmm. I mean, my goodness, you know, I used to still see the sweepstake advertising, and the way it worked is you'd go and you'd pick pick up, you know, you'd pick five or ten magazines, you know, for you know, 12 bucks a month or whatever. And, yeah. and, uh, which was like, you know, a third of the price then at the, you know, at the magazine stand, but the only ones left are at the grocery store, you know, the, the national Enquirer and things of that nature. So that, that advertising is lost. And mm -hmm. another one that's still in use, but it, it's still not really as practical is coupons. Remarkable thing is it's, it's kept, uh, funding the U S post office for like 50 years, 60 years. Mm -hmm. And only 6% of all the coupons that you see coming to your home are ever used by somebody. Yeah. But that 6% makes a huge difference to the bottom line um, of a small business or, or, or a company. Yeah. Well, the other thing to keep in mind is even though the coupon isn't used, it's still effective in getting someone into your business. Uh, That's right. Because that also, you know, seeing that, <clears throat> seeing that name, um, you know, or that brand. We, we know we saw it somewhere. We're not sure where we saw it, but we recognize it. We feel comfortable about it because we've seen, you mm -hmm. know, we two pieces for the price of one. Well, we forgot maybe about that, but we, we know it's Papa John's or it's Domino's or pizza hut or whoever it is. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah, coupons can, uh, can work there. Uh, next we want to talk about uh, co-op advertising, co-op mm -hmm. advertising. Um, <laughs> This is used a lot. Uh, what happens with co-op advertising is that let's say you have a paint store and uh, um, uh, <laughs> I'm trying to think of a paint brand that just escaped me all of a sudden. Bear. <laughs> you got Bear, bear Paints, okay? And uh, Bear will be happy to uh, provide you with a newspaper ad that you just put a, um, you know, uh, your address and everything on the bottom of it. They'll pay part of the advertising. You'll pay part of the advertising. And, um, you know, it's a, it's an inexpensive way to do it. Um, however, uh, you may be waiting for a while to get your part of the advertising. <laughs> Sometimes they're really slow. Some companies are slow and uh, others are not, but you may be kind of slow getting uh, your payment. But if you do this on a regular basis, you can also do it on 
uh, radio or TV, they'll produce the ad and they'll just put your tagline in the last five seconds, you know, for this product, go to XYZ company and wherever and get the, that's the right. And, and, you know, uh, from 1929 to uh, 1970, uh, mid 70, Merrill Lynch, and other stoke stock brokers would charge you $500 to do a trade. Uh, what that meant was be, be, between that, that for you to see a, a, a profit, of something you bought, you'd have to add that cost of 500 to buy and to sell thousand dollars. So, so if you bought something for a thousand dollars, it would cost you a thousand dollars to buy and sell it. And you had to yeah. figure that in. Um, but Charles Schwab came along and he changed everything by the eighties uh, that, you know, they were charging 150 by the end of the eighties, Merrill Lynch was charging $50 and Charles Schwab kept undercutting them. You know, so this is co-opting all the, you know, Merrill Lynch yeah. advertising, you know, because th there was that great advertisement, that ad in, in, uh, in you know, in the 70s, 80s and 90s of pe pe people show you a picture of a big, huge restaurant of people. And, and uh, someone would say, I, I, I think that's Merrill Lynch over there. And everyone stopped and leaned toward him yeah. to see what he had to say. Yeah. Anyway, the point is... It, it, it co-opted uh, for the benefit of the public uh, what uh, Charles Schwab did into the 20s. And in, in the last 10 years, um, Charles Schwab, Schwab star stopped charging any fees. But that was a result, quite honestly, of a great Canadian company, a bank called Toronto Dominion. You'd know it as TD Trading. It's across your country. It's one of the largest uh, 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 brand names in the um, 21st century social network uh, uh, day trading arena where people can use it. <clears throat> and they're the ones who pushed to uh, no commissions over 15 years ago. So the rest of the American industry has followed suit. And so today, l quite literally, you've seen um, in the last 15 years, uh, you know, the price of purchasing or selling a stock, you know, dropped from $5 to a dollar to 50 cents to nothing. So th yeah. I'm going through the litany of that time frame on a co-op issue of advertising that became a huge branding success for everyone. Mm. Yeah, it did. Yeah, the um, yeah the thing to remember here is that uh, many companies do this. Uh, Coke and Pepsi were famous for putting signs outside your building. You know, here's That's your correct. you know X Y Z restaurant, and have to have Coke or Pepsi or something on the bottom, and they'd put yeah. stuff inside your restaurant. You could write on the menu uh, or special of the day or something like that. They'd have some kind of a glass uh, box, you know, that you could write on. But uh, yeah, they did all sorts of things like that uh, for uh, particularly for food items and things like that. But, um, you know, check with your uh, supplier and see if they offer co-op advertising, find out what it is and uh, how to use it. And, um, you know, just make sure you follow all their guidelines, because if you deviate from what they say you have to do, uh, they'll refuse uh, their part of the advertising. You, you'll be stuck for the whole uh, the whole thing. So. Just and that's careful. a great example. Yeah, that's a great example in the food industry because uh, co-oping advertising would be another case where Pepsi and Coke, uh, you know, challenged each other for seventy years to mm -hmm. uh, get into uh, restaurants and and particularly fast food restaurants. Um, I learned long ago from being in the restaurant business that adding um, <clears throat> ice to anything uh, reduces what you're serving by forty percent. Yeah. So, you know, I learned a long time ago because of the way the machines are built. It's all it's all chilled uh, to maintain the carbonation that's in it. So you never order a fast food drink with ice. Just don't get any. You don't need it. It's cold when you come when it comes to your car and adding adding ice reduces or it dilutes it and uh, causes the carbonation. It, lo it loses carbonation sooner. That, but this is a whole, a, a whole aspect of it because it drew people in. It's, a, it's, it's like a big box store in a shopping mall that draws people to the mall, which allows small businesses like you to be there. And all these malls across America from the 60s to the 2000s, um, I always had you know, two things in, com two things in common. At each end of the mall, um, or if, if it was a two-way mall with four ends, you know, like 
Um, they had big box stores and then all the other little small businesses were in between. And then the shared advertising throughout the mall uh, was pretty much covered by the cost of the big box malls, but, uh, or the big box stores, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. So yeah. they're always co-oping and advertising and marketing and branding and selling and uh, just product awareness. It's, it's a fascinating topic, which is why we picked it for today. Yeah. Yeah. They, um, yeah, they're anchor stores, uh, the big anchor stores in malls and things like that, that attract people in and other, um, other stores. Uh, sometimes when you're looking to locate, um, you know, when, when we, um, uh, I was mentioning earlier, uh, when video stores were, uh, prevalent, uh, mm -hmm. we like to locate near dry cleaners, uh, because dry right. cleaning is something that people normally go to or Perfect pizza example. place, That's That's pizza correct. and a movie, uh, pick up your dry cleaning, pick up a movie to take home. And, uh, so that worked pretty well. So look for, um, you know, if there are people who, uh, compliment your business, um, you know, if there's a restaurant and a bakery, maybe they yeah, don't get another, another example. Our, you know, another example of technology and how it's changed uh, co-oping is the ATM automatic, you know, mm -hmm. uh, uh, yeah, automatic teller machine, teller machine. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, all of a sudden banks and institutions found they could just put them in a wall next to, like you just said, you mm -hmm. know, um, which don't exist anymore, but video stores, but pizza stores still do. And, Sure. You know, you think well, you have that. Uh, yeah, at every every uh, gas station uh, will have one. Right. And, and you think you've got that 20 bucks in your pocket to buy that pizza, and then you forgot, oh, I went to the gas station today, and I didn't yeah. get money there. <laughs> uh, you know, and, and it's quite fascinating because when ATMs first came out, they always charged you. Uh, yeah, then, that caused, mm -hmm. then it could be created a, 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 a big cr crisis with uh, too many fees, and your government uh, changed it with uh, a, a commission and, and legislation. And uh, now with the modern 21st century, we'll see how long this takes. And you're yeah. using your phone or you're using your click or you click the card to yeah. buy something. Mm -hmm. They're charging you a fee. You better go look because they actually are. They, that's true. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're not doing it for nothing. Yeah, no. <laughs> And it's your money. You, I know, you know they, yeah. They make, always... they, they, they make 11 times on every, you know, they yeah. lend out eleven dollars for every dollar you put in their bank, and then they charge you to take your money yeah. out of their bank. Like this I know, great a, that, you know, it's amazing. Yeah, it's a deal, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> well, next we've got uh, how to advertise using PSAs or public service announcements, and uh, this is where you, uh, you know, if there's a fundraiser, if there's a uh, charity in town. If there's a nonprofit, uh, you can uh, add your name to the radio TV advertising as a sponsor for an event they're going to have or whatever. You might uh, might sponsor a ball team, uh, you know, something like that. Have your name put on the uh, boards around the outfield, um, things like that. So um, and uh, these are free. Uh, That's correct. And, and yeah, yeah. That, yeah, that's right. BSAs. Um, have been legislated uh, uh, for uh, commercial broadcasting or required to provide a certain amount of uh, public service announcements. Mm -hmm. um, this grew out of uh, World War II and, and the story of Tokyo Rose and everything. And, you know, uh, America set up radio broadcasting after World War II for, to the world. And, and uh, then it became more refined and, and more defined in the 60s because of the Cold War. At the close of the Cold War, but because of the infrastructure was still there, it sort of moved over to, uh, you know, being a, a spokesman for the government. But a lot of not NGOs, non-government organizations use it because, as you say, they're free and uh, they rely on donations. So a lot of causes that, re that re work from donations um, look for a PSA either on commercial, uh, uh, you know, uh, commercial radio or tv or even on uh, on government and uh, it's, it's a great access to the public and as tom says if you can spike an emotion and we know from watching those videos of starving children on tv or listening to the sad situation on the radio uh, people or, or pets pet you know mm -hmm. that's another area um sure. people will open their their uh, their wallet because people are very generous when it comes to sharing 
Mm -hmm. And uh, sharing is a very th important thing because, you know, a hundred years ago or more in the 1800s, people were shamed if they, if they were bad. If, if a person didn't, if a person in town uh, took advantage of someone in business, then everybody in town found out about it and they were shamed out of being able to do business with anyone. Then in, uh, you know, in, in, into the uh, 30s, 40s and 50s, it, it sort of started to lose its way. And certainly into the 60s, 70s and 80s, uh, particularly with money, didn't matter. You just had to be sharper than the other guy. But if you needed him, you'd still deal with him. Well, not today, folks. In the 21st century, it's, you know, it's uh, cancel culture. So keep in mind all the time, all the time. Anything that you do, you make certain that it is, it's not some of the things we, you know, laughed about, you know, naming a product that means something like a car that means yeah. it won't run or something in another mm -hmm. line. No, today yeah. with the, with the woke media and culture, our cancel culture, mm -hmm. do not destroy your business by making a very simple mistake uh, of putting the wrong type of sign up or, making the wrong public service announcement. Um, you you want to make sure you qualify it. Yeah, yeah, that's for sure. Uh, also, this is a great way to, um, um, you know, your nonprofits, they advertise on Facebook. We're going to have this fundraiser XYZ day, mm -hmm. and uh, you can uh, be a part of that. You can be a major sponsor, a minor sponsor, whatever. Get your logo, your name out there, and uh, just or maybe contribute a couple bucks to uh, them. Uh, the other thing about PSAs, um, they, as Shane mentioned earlier, um, radio stations and TV stations are obligated to produce a certain amount of these every day. Uh, right. So you you may or may not get yours in every day, depending on the number of PSAs they have. Um, so um, you know, make so, sure uh, that you find out uh, when you you know when you. Uh, talk to the nonprofit. When is this going to play? Um, you know, it, it, they aren't going to all play between midnight and 5 a.m. You know, they got to put them in prime time. Uh, as and, well. and, and another great use of PSAs for a local shop, a uh, local business, is if there's something that you uh, engage in and you like, it, it might be a you know, family sport that your children are in. Uh, it, it could be something locally, uh, a type of club a fishing club or a sports club, mountain climbing cup club, um, a ski club, uh, you know, sponsor to you, them to your store, both inside and out on the, on the walk, you know, yeah, and then, and then you can use that to get a PSA ad, uh, mm -hmm. you know, so these are the kinds of things you want to think about. Uh, they're ideas that do work and uh, we're here giving them to you. So you don't have to learn it from someone else. Just watch us and we'll give you the goods, baby. There you are. Not right. Well, finishing up, <clears throat> uh, last words, I guess, on the type of advertising. Uh, obviously, not each one of these is going to, you know, few businesses are going to use all of these. So you need to pick and choose what's most effective for you. I've got my two rules of advertising. One is you never advertise anywhere unless there's at least a 75% expectation that uh, you're going to produce more income than the ad costs. So yeah, advertising um, must be a, uh, a benefit. that can never be an expense, you know, so uh, advertising should be free. It brings in enough people to pay for it. And the other one is when uh, logic and emotion come in conflict, emotion always wins. So make sure don't talk to the masses, talk to one person, talk to your best customer in your ads. Uh, wherever they are and however you use the um, the six types of advertiser we talked about. Talk to yeah, an individual my, my person. Two, my two rules are targeting the demographics. Mm -hmm. Proven fact, um, over 70 years, Mark, uh, the, the experts that look at these numbers, because numbers don't lie, people do. And, and demographics is what everything is based on, including what they charge you to advertise. So demographics are really important. And uh, the, the other thing is do not do anything, as I said, in this cancel culture to damage your brand name. Uh, it's just mm -hmm. uh, it's a very dangerous time right now. And uh, you, ha you have to uh, be careful uh, uh, about what you want to do. And, you know, and, and as hard as this is to say, 
even paying more for reinforced glass instead of just normal glass in your window or demand the landlord put it in. You know, if, if you're going to have a, a, a box store, I, you know, I'm afraid now in the 21st century, you, you know, you're going to have to think about more security and, and securing your property if that's what you do. Mm -hmm. uh, even more today. And that should be at the expense of the landlord. So uh, think about that. And next time you're talking to your landlord about your uh, your uh, rental or your monthly rent, you know, get on that get on that horse and say, oh, I love it here, but I need more security. I, I don't need my shop blown up overnight. <laughs> Amen to that. So, all right. Hey, make sure you listen to our past shows at KMMSAM.com. If you missed any or part of this one, uh, we post them uh, every day uh, within an hour or two after the show. So uh, we'll get those up there. Uh, also, a reminder, on Saturdays, uh, we're on radio from 8 to 11 Mountain Time. Uh, you're going to listen to us at KMMSAM.com. No need to subscribe to anything. No need to leave any personal information, anything like that. And don't forget our uh, uh, our uh, new website, uh, TomAndChain.com, TomAndChain.com. We'll have stuff over there for you. Also, if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to subscribe. And uh, when you hit the subscribe button, get that notification bell, and you'll never miss another podcast. Also, like us and leave a comment. Uh, Facebook uh, or Facebook, well, them too. But <laughs> uh, YouTube likes that kind of stuff, right? And also, don't forget, we're on Patreon, too. If you would like to support the show, uh, you can do that for as little as $3 a month. We would appreciate it because we do have costs involved in putting this on uh, every uh, every week as well as on Saturdays. So we uh, we hope that you will support us uh, with uh, a simple donation there. If you want to get, get higher donations, uh, you get private stuff from us. Uh, we can deal with uh, a private... Uh, a project you have or uh, some kind of a, um, you know, if you need advice on a particular topic and just don't want to go public with it, uh, we can certainly do that as well. And uh, we'll produce extra stuff for only for you uh, and uh, things that uh, if there are topics you want to know about uh, and you're in that group, let us know and uh, we'll be happy to take care of that for you. So, uh, we appreciate you very much, and uh, hopefully uh, you will uh, uh, subscribe to us and whatever. So, and uh, hi from Noel. Uh, Noel's dad and I were in uh, a band for about six years. In fact, we started together. Her dad and I started uh, as a two as a duo. What was the uh, name of the band? We were the Sundowners uh, when there we eventually go. got going. Yeah, we did. Uh, we did Eagle stuff and country and uh, whatever and bowling alleys and small venues all over uh, Southern Illinois. So uh, nice to hear from you, Nicole. Thanks for, thanks for being here. And Linda says great information, guys. Thank you so much. Hey, we appreciate uh, all your comments and thanks very much uh, folks. So, uh, so uh, I would say that we're, uh, we're pretty well done. So say goodbye, Shane. I will indeed be happy, be safe and be happy, be safe. And live in the moment and uh, finally uh, live to work. Come home safe to your family. Come home happy from work. That's the way they want to see you coming through that front door. Mm -hmm. Have a good day. That's right. All right. That's going to wrap it up for this segment. Uh, we'll be back Thursday with another small business topic. So uh, be sure you uh, subscribe and uh, click that notification bell. If you're on uh, YouTube, uh, Facebook, uh, you'll be reminded uh, that we are on uh, uh, Facebook Live. So um, we really appreciate it. Hey, uh, all views are welcome here. And if you think it there, we'll say it here. So we'll see everybody on Thursday, 10 a.m. Mountain Time.